Sometimes it would be nice to add a bit of visual complexity to simple objects you design for 3D printing. We need two things to make this work. We need a pattern that we can generate for any shape we want that is easily 3D printable, no matter the orientation. And we need a way of modifying the non-vital geometry of parts to add this pattern. The issue here is that some regions of a component are usually really important for the component to do its job. Some parts probably just exist because you are too lazy to remove them in the modeling software. But let's start with the pattern. There are several nice generative algorithms to create patterns. There is a classic reaction diffusion pattern, slightly more obscure things such as leafination, or something simple like Perlin noise. I am using Perlin noise here because it has a few very convenient properties that makes it perfect for the job. Perlin noise is an algorithm by Ken Perlin, developed for the 1982 version of Tron. Apparently most of the textures on surfaces were done by his noise, but it's hard to find any further details about that. When used in two dimensions, the algorithm subdivides a square into 256 blocks. Each block's corners get assigned a pseudorandom vector. To actually get the noise value for any point within the block, you just interpolate the noise value from the corner vectors and the distance to them. If the algorithm's output is interpreted as height values, we get a nice landscape-like shape filled with hills and valleys. That's, as you can imagine, the usual application of Perlin noise, procedural landscape generation for games. The nice property of 2D Perlin noise is that the generated landscape is basically 2.5D. There are no caves and no overhangs. Everything generated here could easily be 3D printed. But before we can actually 3D print this noise pattern, we need to create an STL file from that. An STL file is a mesh that's a set of points and connections in between these points to define surfaces. The output of the Perlin noise algorithm are just points without any defined surfaces. So what we need to do is connect all of these points to form triangles. We can do that in the code right after calculating the noise. When we do that, we get a nice mesh. But it is only the top surface, not a solid object. There is no point in trying to 3D print that. But when changing the script to add additional points and polygons, we can create a block. The block has a Perlin pattern as a single face, and this would be ready for 3D printing. But we actually want to add this pattern to an already existing part. Before we can do that, we need to take care of something else first. In our modeling software, we need to export the complete model and a second model that only covers regions that are not vital. These regions can be altered by the Perlin noise. If we do that, we get three STLs. My preferred way of combining STLs is OpenSCAD and its Boolean operations. Load the meshes in OpenSCAD and simply apply union, difference and intersection in the right order. The preview looks slightly glitchy because OpenSCAD is not very good in previewing meshes that share faces. The exported model, however, is mostly fine, although it may take a few minutes to compute. Any tiny errors in the mesh can be auto repaired by the slicer, so no need to worry about that. We are now ready to go and can print the resulting part. Depending on the orientation on the print bed, some regions may not be printed absolutely perfect, but all in all it should be pretty reliable. You can find the script to generate Perlin noise and examples on GitHub, the link is in the description. In addition to that, I'll link to a few good Perlin noise explanation videos by other people, which may be interesting as well.